Hello, Rem the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 366. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. It's a nice day here in the Ozarks. It's starting to cool down a little bit. I was out in the yard last night and had all those sounds of fall in the air. It was really nice. It's starting to cool down some. There for a while, it was just miserably hot. Oh, um, yeah. We August set in about, what, the 12th of June. Oh, and, and it just, just seems uh, like it didn't want to let up. But I can always tell and when there's fog in the mornings as we're getting close to cooler temperatures, and that's good news. We're getting closer to the conference time. We're so excited to meet you guys that are able to come, and we're sure hoping that those that didn't get to come this time will, will be able to join us the next time. And we're excited tomorrow the uh, company that's installing the audio and the video equipment comes, and they mm-hmm. begin their process, and and they said it would take four days, and then uh, we get to start learning how to operate everything and, and uh, getting everything into place ready for the conference. And Mary's been testing some recipes, and I am here to testify that so far every one of them that she has tried are really good. Everybody's <laughs> going to – is it's going to be yummy stuff. I wanted to let you know, too, we had a, a place on the uh, – you know, when you registered for the conference to let us know if you gluten, needed gluten-free. And I also wanted to ask uh, if you have a, a sensitivity to dairy, if you need something that's, that doesn't have dairy, if you let us know, send an email, because I'm, I'm going to fix lasagna for one of those meals, and it's going to be loaded with, with uh, ricotta cheese and mozzarella cheese and, and all kinds of dairy. So uh, if you have a sensitivity that if you let me know, then I'll make provision for that. And we're just, we're getting everything in order. Uh, we're waiting. I think we had 11 chairs that were damaged in shipment and the company's replacing those. And, and, uh, this, everything's really starting to fall into place. It is. We're getting closer. Getting closer. And, and I and can't the times are and, getting more perilous. Oh my word. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, this last week, guys. Oh, there's so many things going on. <laughs> Where do you? Where do you start? This well, I, we, we were planning for a six hour program today, right? You know, I was looking back <laughs> at, uh, you know, where it says in the, in the, when uh, they were asking Jesus, you know, when he's going to come back, it says it'll be as the days of Noah. So I was looking back at that, and in uh, Genesis 6, 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And I started thinking about that in comparison to where we are today. And, you know, they are constantly, Mike, imagining new ways to defile children. Yes. I saw a a news clip where um, parents were complaining about something that had went on in their school and they'd had a, had drag queens come in. And, uh, you know, the kids were jumping and stuff because they make it like it's a party or something. Well, a little kid's not going to understand the depths of what's going on. Somebody had like a unicorn horn sticking out of their head, but it, it looked pornographic. I mean, they were, they were dressed in things that were um, – it, it was just pornographic. That's the only way I know how to describe the, the trans, it. It made me sick to my stomach. The transgender movement has it because it's, it's basically uh, grooming the kids for pedophilia, in my opinion. And it has, it has gotten so bad that one of the major hashtags, when you look uh, coming out of the, uh, the gay and lesbian community, it's, LB, it's LBT, uh, LB, LGB drop the T, that they have become so... Um, horrified at what they're seeing with with uh, with uh, the the trannies that there there is a community or beginning in mass to reject this mm-hmm. and uh, guys it's it's literally as in the days of noah well and anytime they start you know um and going sure. away from from god's ways yeah. it, it gets worse it, it just escalates into worse things and then worse things and it's you know the the thing with the drag queen i i was sitting there and i couldn't watch it for very long i was getting so sick to my stomach and i i thought imagine somebody from the 1950s seeing this i don't think they would have believed it i, I think, think that they, they would have thought took that, up arms to stop it um oh i think so I think back in those days there would have been an uprising. And I, I think that even Antifa can sense that because that, that this last one that they had this last week, they actually had Antifa show up with AR-15s to guard uh, the, 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 the transvestites that were the drag queens that were holding it. 
And to, to me, uh, it, so that's a, a great backdrop for bringing all these little kids into a supposedly a, a family-friendly event. Uh, guys, they're, they're, they're reworking all the definitions of everything. And, uh, it, you know, it's, it's like for the rest of the body of Christ, how, lo- how much worse is it going to get before you wake up and realize that we need revival and that this stuff has happened on our watch when we were supposed to be salt and light in the earth? Well, it's, there's such evil. You know, this is, this is the kind of stuff that they've done in secret, Mike. This is, this is what, when people talk about um, program multiples and, and children being taken and programmed, this is exactly the kind of stuff they do. They, they groom children. Um, there was one very elite family that I know was right in the middle of grooming children for Saudi Arabian princes. Mm-hmm. And, and what, it, what it was was so despicable. But it's it's all about oil deals and money and it's it's despicable. I mean it it's beyond your imagination. Where their imagination is conjuring up ways to defile children, your imagination can't even go there if you're a normal person. Well the apostle Paul talked about in that first Corinthians. He said, Listen, these people do stuff in secret that if it back then he said if it had become public, they even they would have been ashamed. But now they it's it's almost like these these things are celebrated by many and that that shows you how much further we are to as in the days of Noah just exactly what you're talking about well and I think that there's going to be judgment for those that have tolerated it too instead yes. of speaking against it instead of making a stand they're tolerating it you know I, I just think what was um, going through my mind this last week as we saw all this crazy stuff is I thought I would not want to be standing too close to somebody evil in the coming days no because I'm telling you, it. I think that you know God's well able to protect a righteous person standing next to an unrighteous person. You know, the word says a thousand will fall at one side, ten thousand at the other, but it won't come near you. There's a promise there for those that love God and are following His ways to be protected, and and we've got the precedent of that in uh, Egypt. We do when they put the blood or over the doorposts, that death angel went right over it. And that's when you've got the blood of Jesus over your life, when, when you've accepted Jesus as your Savior and you're washed by the blood of the Lamb, then that, there's protection there. And, you know, we've always talked about breaches. You can, you can walk out of that. You can get yourself in a dangerous position by doing things that are, that are um, unrighteous, doing things against God's, God's statutes. Uh, but but if you're if you're trying with all your heart and you're praying every day and repenting and, and doing everything that you can to walk close to God, you could be standing right next to somebody that judgment would fall on and you'd be okay. Yeah, ten ten thousand will fall by my left hand or a thousand by my right, but it will not come yeah, near me. But That's I still wouldn't want to be standing time. too close to one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I feel like it's going to get to that place. I feel like we're so close. You know, years ago when God was talking to me about His judgment and and the evil that was coming, and uh, I couldn't even have imagined some of the evil we've all seen. Uh, I couldn't, because it's been, you know, going toward 30 years now. I could not have imagined the things that we've seen. Um, You know, when I had some memories of things happen and I started doing research, um, I thought, oh, this is the kind of stuff, you know, you hide um, from the, the public. You would never do these things in public, and now here they are doing them right out in the public because used to that would i think that people would have taken somebody out in the street and shot them yeah oh absolutely you know there was and and now we've just it's been this slow boil just indoctrinate get them you know get you get you used to it so you'll accept it and it's it's pathetic it really is and yeah and and, when you when you look at not only that but you know, we're going to touch in a minute with, with Biden, but all the world leaders in the Western world seems to me like they have given themselves over to a level of darkness that is beyond, it is taking them away from common sense. That's how you know it's mind control. Yeah. I mean, there's no logical thought to it. There can't be. There are can't the, be logical They, they have given themselves over to another agenda. They, you know, they were voted into office to represent the people. They all claim to be, you know, democratic uh, societies, and yet nothing they do, the people want absolutely nothing. 
but yet you see them moving across the board. They meet at Davos. They will meet at Bilderbergers. They will meet at all these different things. And they come up with agendas that are actually against the people, the very mm-hmm. people that they claim to represent. Although we've got got people that, that are grassroots that have made it in and are yeah. And I think that that we can turn a lot of this with the elections. Yeah. If everybody will get out and vote and, uh, you know, investigate those candidates, yeah. see which ones. And don't go by, by sound bites. Do Really do your homework mm-hmm. and pray through the issues because one of the things that they are able to do is they, they use Hollywood. They can... They could they can take a super liberal person and make them look like they're just as conservative as can be until they get into office. Mm-hmm. You have and to then really watch, how watch they it. Vote. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Oh well, and I had a I had a dream the other night, and I really felt like it was a warning dream. I I was standing and I heard a sound. I looked up and there was an ambulance went by faster than any ambulance I've ever seen go, and I thought in that dream I thought oh something so horrible has happened. And I think that we are we we need to get prepared um, for some bad things to happen. Yeah. And it, it doesn't. I'm not trying to cause fear. I'm I'm not trying to to say that God's people won't be protected. I'm just saying, I think when evil reaches this pinnacle, that there's there's stuff going to rock and roll. And uh, there has to be. Now the Bible says that the righteous rejoice in judgment. Uh, but, you know, historically I've seen over the last maybe 20, 30 years when you start talking judgment, the ones that get this fearful expression on their face are the Christians. And I think a lot of it is because their spirit man knows that they've not really been taught the word and they're not ready. And I think that's why we've been give, given the clarion call, you know, get right with God, no mm-hmm. more compromise, return back to the ways of God. Uh, repentance needs to be a lifestyle. Making sure that the blood is over the, over, over the doorpost needs to be a lifestyle. When you live that kind of lifestyle, then you can you can have those those Passover moments where even God could bring a death angel, but it doesn't come near you because mm-hmm. your life is under the blood. That's right. That's where the protection is. And and so I think one of the things that that is going to become uniform in the body of Christ is God. You need to judge some things. I I'm praying for that every yes. day, and I'm asking God because in His infinite wisdom, He knows if somebody's going to get saved down the road. And I've prayed that for years over over the little children. You know, if there's any hope that they can be saved, then I pray that. But if they're if there are a reprobate mind, if there is no hope for them, then why let them continue to hurt anyone? And so I, I in my opinion, uh, we need judgment. We need judgment for the hope, the hope of these little children. Yeah, we do. You know, they, there's so much talk about human trafficking at the border. And they they got so mad at uh, Governor Abbott because he was busing some of the immigrants that were coming over the border the to sanctuary. Chicago, and they they weren't so happy about it. Now, sanctuary cities all said they didn't like it when it was happening to them, and then, in fact they had to dial back the rhetoric because they started saying the same things that people were saying in Texas, and it didn't fit with the with the Democratic narrative. Uh, guys, nothing. In, in fact, I, I read one report that the the Texas Rangers and, and the Texas forces down there. 80 people that were uh, on the terrorist watch list, 80, Mary, they've caught coming across the border. I don't have a doubt because they, they haven't had any controls over it. And they haven't let the Border Patrol do what no. they need to do. They've almost handcuffed them. And so I, I can't even imagine what, what they had planned. Now, God's, our prayers can, can halt a lot of this stuff, and I, I'm sure encouraging all of us to pray um, but I can't even imagine what they have planned with these people that have come over the border. You know, they, they could be a mass in an army. If you look at this, most of these people are, are young fighting age men. Yes. And so not what, what kind of army could they be amassing? Yeah. And a lot of them are not with families. Like they will, they will do the, the 10 or 15% or like mothers with children stuff is what the regular news media shows. They don't show you the 85% that are young fighting age men. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because, it, 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 guys, our, our local news either does one of two things. It's either pushing a propaganda and agenda or what they're offering is a distraction. Don't look over to the left. Look over to the right in this little thing that, that we can move your emotions with so that you don't look at what's really going mm-hmm. on. And that's why we need to be a people of prayer. We do. And that that's one of the things I thought— you know, 
if if we all come with an attitude of we're going to agree in prayer that God's going to move, that God's going to stop some evil when we have these conferences, I can look forward to that, can't you guys? Because there's there's power in agreement. Yes. And I believe our prayers can make a big difference. And I've been um, binding the power of the demons that are controlling the people and loosening the power of the kingdom of God to bring freedom to the minds of God's creation because this this is definitely a mind control agenda. It is. It is, and and whether people know it or not, they've been able to impact the masses, and not to the degree of what you know what I've talked about, but I I'm telling you, TV has done a done a whale of a job. Video a, games. <laughs> there's a level of mind control all across the board that either puts people to sleep spiritually, gets them to where they're like in their own little world where they're not imagining anything that's going on, or they end up becoming activists for the other side. I mean, and, and then you, of course, then you have the antagonists that are, that are in it too. But guys, this, this is across the board. That's why there needs to be a spiritual awakening in America. Mm-hmm. 10% of the solution is going to be political. 10%. 90% of it's going to be a sovereign move of God in both revival and judgment. And, and so if we look at it that way and we pray at it that way, you know, there, there was a time in America that the politicians feared the church. They feared the righteousness of the people. And uh, they have worked, they have labored for well over a century to so corrupt us, whether in communists invaded our seminaries back in the 1920s, major churches, the New Age movement has come mm-hmm. in, marry over and over again all these different things to water down the gospel, water down the word, uh, to water all these things down that has rendered the, the church of Jesus Christ powerless except for the remnant because they have set all that down and say, I'm not drinking of that cup anymore. I'm going to drink up the cup of the Lord. Well, you know, I remember years ago, just to show you my ignorance, um, back when I was a teenager and I started going to an Assembly of God church, um, I was just really shocked at some of their the things that they wouldn't allow. They wouldn't allow you to go to a movie uh, they wouldn't allow uh, girls and boys to swim in the same same pool. I mean, there were there were a lot of things that, and I remember thinking, and I re- I repented of this, how ridiculous all that was. <laughs> and I look back now, and I'm thinking, man, they they had an edge on it, you know. And I, I'm sure that the pressure was so so much on them that they that they had to keep you know pushing back on things. But you know. You you set a young man with um, in a setting with a, a bunch of women so scantily clothed. That's not a wise thing. No. <laughs> you know it's really not. And and I can see it now so clear. I can see how Satan's done things. That, but back when when I was young, I just thought, well, that's ridiculous. And it wasn't. It wasn't. They were looking out. They they saw what was going on and and then the pressure i can imagine the pressure they were under to change those things because you know that that wouldn't have worked that wouldn't work with the agenda you got to get everything out there you got to have a sexual revolution you got the 60s sexual revolution it changed everything but but i remember like there you know the the bathing suits just got worse and worse and what they call string bikinis and things like that, it doesn't leave much to the imagination. And, and you know, and, and then you wonder why so many people get hooked on pornography and stuff like that. This is an in-your-face assault, an in-your-face assault in every conceivable way. And I, I've looked back at that and said, oh, God, I'm so sorry that I, that I uh, would have added to that. If somebody asked me, I don't remember if anybody ever did, but if somebody asked me, I would have just thought, well, that's ridiculous. But now as I'm older and wiser and, and uh, you know, seeking God with all my heart, I look back on that and think, man, there was some wisdom there. You know, and, and people filled with the Holy Spirit, their, their spirits were being grieved at what was going on. They may not have even understood what was coming because who could have even imagined where we'd be this day? But their spirits knew. Yeah, they did. And so that's one of my prayers every day is, oh, Holy Spirit, you know, show me. Convict me if if I'm missing it somewhere if I if I'm not seeing something right because that's that's what enables the remnant to stand you know even if you don't understand all that's going on the Holy Spirit can just say there's something wrong here and there's nothing wrong with saying that I've told people that I'll say I don't know what it is but there's something wrong 
I perceive there's something wrong. Yeah. And and just as a cautionary word, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's not. You know, it's it's they they have taken us to, from uh, from Leva to Beaver to where we are now. That mm-hmm. we have to have metal detectors in schools. You know, it used to be uh, back in the fifties there were actually rifles at the school because the kids were learning how to shoot twenty two rifles, and now the riflery was actually a gym activity, and now. Uh, we have to have we have to have metal detectors to make sure that guns aren't getting into school and all these different things. This is the agenda of the communists. This is the agenda mm-hmm. of the left, is to create such chaos and to destroy the very moral fiber of a nation, and uh, and build the case to take the guns. And take oh yeah to take the guns, and well, maybe one of the reasons for that. Now what they won't tell you know we have had some very tragic things happen. Like the one down in Texas, of course, I, I think there was an utter failure on the part of the police down there, and that, that has all come to light. But one of the things that I, w- I was watching a news broadcast, and, and there was a guy there that he was he had done statistics. He, w- he was a uh, corporate um, forensic analyst that would you know just examine things that were going to, and he has gotten into the into the second amendment thing and he said even what the FBI says the FBI says guns do not help stop mass shootings last year only like 5 or 6 according to them and he said when we did our checking there were 41 not 11 that they're they're skewing the numbers and although we have had some very tragic things happen at the same time over 1 million times now Ted Cruz brought this as part of the congressional record over one million times last year, someone used to fire on me to protect their life or to protect the lives of others. You're never going to hear you that on hear the news. That. Well, they just had somebody do a mass trying to kill people with a knife. Yeah, that was I up did. in Canada. And so, I mean, they can't, you know, I'll, I'll declare that we can't have a knife. we got to walk around with butter knives or something. I mean, yeah. they, they push everything too far. Well, they do. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a reason to the madness. No communist revolution has ever worked unless they do two things. They take the guns away from the people so that only suppose the police officers and the bad guys have the guns. And then they turn on the people, and since no one is armed, anybody that's in opposition, they just simply wipe out and there's blood in the streets. If they can't do those two things, a communist revolution will fail. And that, that, I think that's the real agenda um, even when you look at back when Japan was, we were in World War II with Japan, the reason Japan never came on American soil is because they said there was a rifle behind every tree. It would be suicide. So actually having an armed citizenry is a part of national mm-hmm. security. Makes sense. Uh, but when you take but you can't the, make sense in this society. <laughs> you can't make sense in this society. And, and in fact, this uh, last week I, I watched uh, President Biden's speech and uh, I was horrified. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, I didn't listen to all of it. I just saw the pictures. The, the, not not just the not just what he said because he basically they declared conservatives enemies of the state. Yeah, I think he okay. walked that back a little bit, but <sighs> yeah, he he walked it back after was there was backlash. But that was that was his agenda. But when you look at the imagery, mm-hmm. okay, he did this in Philadelphia at Independence Hall. Okay, where the Declaration of Independence and all that was signed. He also did it with Marines staged in the background, Mary. Never in American history has a president ever, while dealing with domestic policy. Now, we've had in the past, like when Bush went over and he was on an aircraft carrier because we were at war with what was going on. That's a proper setting for that because it's it's showing military force because of, of you standing against the enemy. Never in American history as a president dealing with domestic policy, has ever had Marines or any other military standing in the background. That is completely the wrong sign because U.S. military are to never be used for domestic things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the, second th- the third thing is, Mary, the backdrop was red and black. Dark red, blood red. Yeah, it was will, a bizarre background. Which is <laughs> communistic. It is. It is the. You know, when you think of that, you think of the Soviet Union. You think of communist China. He had his fist clutched as 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 he was as he was giving his speech, and uh, looking back at it, uh, you can actually see 
If you go back and look at videos of Stalin or even Hitler, you'll see some of the same imagery. Okay. They were uh, kind of overplaying their hand. Overplaying their hand. And it, it was actually so horrifying, the backdrop, that CNN commentators, okay, the super liberals, begin questioning, saying, what on earth is he doing? And you kind of waited for something to rise out of the background with horns or something. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and uh, this, this, is, this is what the New York Post said about this speech. It said the speech President Biden gave on Thursday w- was one he reportedly wanted to give for weeks, but White House staff resisted. Aides did not think it was the right speech or the right time, which in plain English means they didn't like it. For once, give them credit. Now that we see what garbage the big guy had on his mind, we had, they had a right to resist. Unfortunately, he pulled rank and they had to let Biden be Biden. The result was bad for Democrats and terrible for the nation. To call it hateful speech doesn't do justice to its awfulness. The promise of an address of the soul of the nation and setting and the setting of Philadelphia's independent hall suggested it would be an appeal to our better angels, or in other words, our better nature to try to bring unity and peace. Instead, with lurid red lighting and two Marines standing at attention to service props, Biden delivered a 24-minute uh, uh, minute seared with, uh, that was disjointed, rantingly partisan, and at heart a declaration of war against those Americans who did not support him. Mary, I was horrified at that, especially when, when, I, was, when I was in Germany in the military. I was stationed at 3rd Infantry Division headquarters. Uh, there's a lot of things that we had to look at the uh, that we had to study. We had to study the so the, the they at least had me do uh, st- st- Soviet ideology, communist ideology, uh, their doctrine of war, all these different things. That's one of the reasons I'm so concerned about uh, Europe poking the bear because Russia, in its Soviet days, their their doctrine of war said that a nuclear war was winnable. And our, you know, ours is, you know, we'll use it at, 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 if we ever have to, if we ever get our back into a corner, but that's the very last thing that you do. The Soviet was, we could win with a preemptive Soviet or a, a, a nuclear strike and win. And so you, you have a military that historically had been trained for 50 years that, you, you know, you, you, things look bad. You just bring out the nukes and you just nuke them because you can win it. And that's what we have going on over in Europe right now. I'm thinking, ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they've kind of set themselves up because they get gas from Russia, don't they? Didn't yeah, they get all their Europe? national gas. All their power comes from Russia. And so they're fighting the one that to where they won't even have the gas they need. Yeah, they're going to starve out their people. And that may be justification for the war, but it's it's things that they did themselves. Well, we've got to, we the leadership, we've got to pray for the people. Yeah, we got to pray for the people. Because they're kind of in the same shape we are over here. It's all... There, there needs to be an overturning. And in fact, in, in Proverbs 29, 2, it says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Now, the Amplified adds to that, they groan and sigh. When you look at the Hebrew word, it means they sigh in pain. And the sighing and pain since... About here, about two and a half years ago, or whenever it was that Biden took office, things in America have radically changed. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, even liberals are beginning to sigh in pain. And it's about to really get worse over in in Europe. Well, we're going to pray for him. God can change it there, too. (laughs) I want to set the backdrop. This is the speech that Biden gave in Independence Hall. Now, I want to go back to another year, 1774. Okay, and this was the first session of the, of the Continental Congress, uh, which opened at the beginning of September in 1774 with prayer in Carpenter's Hall in Philadelphia. Threatened by the most powerful monarch in the world, British King George III, the American founders heard Reverend Jacob Duche uh, read Psalms 35 and the Anglican Book of Prayer, the Prayer Psalter, for that day, September 7th. 1774. Now listen to this. This this is the Congress meeting, okay? Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strike with that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and raise it for my help. Draw also the spear and the battle axe to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be ashamed and be dishonored who seek my life, and let those be turned back and humiliated that devise evil against me. We actually need to begin praying prayers like that uh, today again. It said, and then uh, Reverend Jacob Deshaies prayed, 
Be thou present, O God of wisdom, and direct the counsel of this honorable assembly. Enable them to settle all things on the best and surest foundations, that the that the scene of blood may be speedily closed, and that honor, that, or that order, harmony, and peace may be effectively restored, and that truth, justice, religion, and piety uh, prevail and flourish among the people. Preserve the health of their bodies and the vigor of their minds. Shower down on them and the millions that they represent such temporal blessings as thou seest expedient for them in this world and crown them with everlasting glory in the life to come. All this we ask in the name and through the merits of Jesus Christ, thy Son and our Savior. It says on that same day, uh, September 7, 1774, John Adams wrote to his wife, uh, my mind just went blank. Abigail. Abigail described the prayer. When the Congress met, Mr. Cush uh, made a motion that it should be opened with prayer. It was opposed by Mr. Jay of New York and Mr. Uh, Rutledge of South uh, South Carolina because they were so divided in religious sentiment. Some Episcopal, some Quaker, some Anabaptist, some Presbyterian, some Congregationalist, that they could not uh, join in the same act of worship. Mr. Samuel Adams rose and said that he was no bigot and could hear the prayers of any gentleman of piety. Mary, what brought them together was holiness and respect for God mm-hmm. that went across that's, denominational that's boards. Yeah. So listen, this guy, the guy that we're asking to pray, he may not be from our, our different denominations, but he's a man known to be pious that walked with God. He was uh, the gentleman of piety and virtue who was at the same time a friend to his country. He was a stranger in Philadelphia, but... I had heard that Mr. Duche uh, deserved the character, uh, the, and, and therefore he moved that Mr. Duche, an Episcopal clergyman, might be desired to read the prayers to Congress the following morning. The motion was seconded and passed in the affirmative. Mr. Randolph, our president, veiled on Mr. Duche and received an answer that if his health would permit, he would do so. Now, compare that. Let's, let's fast forward to 2022, where... Representative Jerry Nadler, when they were passing some things, said, what any religious tradition describes as God's will will, be, will is no concern of this Congress. You know, you read the, the writings that Adams wrote to his, to his wife after they, we actually had the Constitution and everything, Mary, and they were studying the Word of God. The whole Congress was in a prayer meeting studying the Word of God, and he was writing about their excitement that the Holy Spirit was moving and began showing them things to do that they needed to implement in government to bring balance and to bring all these things. This entire nation was birthed out of the Word of God and prayer, regardless of what, uh, what all the people are trying to rewrite history says. And godlessness is taking it down. This has got to be stopped. And this, this is not only going on in America. It, it's going on in all Western society. It's the setup for the for the Antichrist. New World Order. It's the setup for the New World Order, which is going to be a communistic because they have communism was birthed out of a false messiah named Jacob Frank, and it's based on nihilism and wiping out everything that God has ever done on the earth. Guys, our our peace and our prosperity has been slowly taken away as well as many of our God-given freedoms. Our schools no longer educate, they indoctrinate. Our streets are not safe. Our leaders no longer represent us, but rather the international agenda born from hell. <coughs> a friend of mine, Dr. John Gar, sent me this quote from a, in a 20th century English journalist named Malcolm uh, Mugridge, and I, I want to I read this. It says, so the final conclusion would surely be that whereas other civilizations have been brought down by attacks of barbarians from without, ours has the unique distinction of training its own destroyers at its own educational institutions, then providing them with facilities for propagating their destructive ideology far and wide at the the expense of the public. Thus did Western man decide to abolish himself, creating his own boredom out of his affluence, his own vulnerability out of his own strength, his own impotence out of his own erotomania, himself blowing the trumpet that brought down the walls of his own city tumbling down, and having convinced himself that he was too numerous, labor with pills and scalpel and syringe to make himself fewer. 
until at last, having educated himself into imblicity or being an imbecile, and polluted and drugged himself into stupefaction, he kneeled over a weary, battered old brontosaurus and became extinct. That's what they have planned for Western society. But one of the most powerful phrases in the Word of God is, but then God. Mm -hmm. But then God. They have set Western society on a path of destruction, not only here in America, but we're, we're seeing the implosion in Canada. We're seeing it all throughout Europe. It's set for destruction. If God does not move this, this is why our prayer needs to be for, for divine intervention. That's why we have to have revival. That's why we have to have divine judgment to happen for God to stop these things. In Psalms 125, 1 through 5, it says, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is around about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest on the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hand into iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto them that be good and unto them that are upright in, thine, in their hearts. As for such as turn away unto them their crooked ways, and the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Now there's a warning here that we, we find in, in verse 3. It says, now listen, the, the rod of the wicked shall not lay upon the lot of the righteous. And then the thing is, now lest the righteous put forth their hand to iniquity, which means if... If evil rulership can get the righteous to compromise, it sets them aside for judgment is what they're being warned well, about Well, that's happened. Here. In fact, Date says, he says, God shall punish those who backslide, who are unfaithful, who give way to sin, and who leave the narrow road for the broad one. <coughs> so temptation and the pressure they put on us to compromise is, is not about bringing peace and harmony. But it's about trying to hedge their bets. God, are you going to destroy your people along with the unrighteous? And God warns us, listen, don't do that. Don't compromise. Because we have seen in the, in the history of Israel where there was a lot of people that were called Israelites, but God didn't save them. But he saved the righteous, the remnant. And there's going to, I think in the days ahead, Mary, there's going to be a lot of people that we, uh, that were, like how we have rhinos, you know, Republicans in name only, we have Christians in name only, mm -hmm. that they have so compromised, they have called evil good and good evil. Yeah, they have. They're going to be judged right along with the, with the ones that promote the evil. Mm -hmm. They have set themselves up. They have forgotten all the warnings that God gave them. There, 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 there are certain times in history that requires divine intervention. And I think now is the time. Oh, we've got to pray for it. Our response to everything that's going on, guys, is we got to press into God to see revival that produces. Now, I'm not talking about revival where people are getting Holy Ghost goosebumps. I'm not talking about revival to where people are laughing. I'm not talking about revival that gives false signs and wonders. I'm talking about revival that produces godliness and holiness and piety and righteousness in the lives of the people. Real revival. You know, you almost have to go back to the times of Finney. You know, when, when when they had revivals then, the taverns closed down, the brothels closed down, the the the, the sinners had a hard time. You, in fact, there were, there were times in the foundation, right before the foundation of America, the the uh, those that framed the Constitution, they were very fearful that we were not a righteous enough people to have a constitutional republic. We do not have a democracy. That's what the Democrats try to keep making it. A democracy, the people can vote in communism. A constitutional republic, you can't do that because mm -hmm. there's checks and balances and right. the government is restrained for the sake of the people. Right. Okay. So they keep on trying to take us and make us something that we're not to get us to somewhere we never want to go. Yeah, it blows me away when they'd say that, you know, how how we're against democracy, like it's against America. 
you know, if, if you believe, if you're conservative. And I'm thinking, this is the most ox, oxymoronic statement I've ever heard. They're the ones that are doing that. Yeah. Actually, I am against democracy because I am a constitutional Republican. Right, but, but uh, most Republican. people, though, think they don't recognize that. Yeah, it's, it's the you know, word they, games they right, play. Right, because most people say, yeah, we're a democracy. No. They think if you vote, you're a democracy. Well, there's, there's, there's certain things because, you know, they always bring in the Constitution. They hate the Constitution because the Constitution limits what they can do, and what they can't do. In fact, they've been throwing the Constitution out of, out of, um, out of balance since the turn of the 20th century. You know, senators, the, we, we had the House of Representatives. They represented us. The senators were elected by state senates. And, Mary, they, could be, they, they would have to come... Uh, twice a year to, to appear before the the state house to say this is what I voted on and they say we didn't tell you to vote on that we told you to do this and they could be recalled and replaced in an instant if that state decided to do that they took that out of balance by saying we need to let the people vote on both so both can be manipulated they began throwing it out of out of rhythm then and it's just one thing and after then another. just filling it up with lobbyists that are, oh, yeah. are giving them money for their their campaigns if they, they vote the way they want. Yeah. And I, I think we're on the move. We're, we're on the verge of a sovereign move of God, and it's going to dynamically change a lot of things. We're going to see judgment. Uh, I, I think we're going to see things of biblical proportion in the days ahead. And, and, and I'm not saying that that we have to be afraid. The Bible says the righteous rejoice in judgment, that we're, we're going to see God move for the sake of the remnant. And this this is the word that he gave me. I said, God, what, you know, what should... Uh, what should I say to to Biden and to those that are doing all these things? And he said, he said, read to them Isaiah ten one through four. And if you if you know prophetic utterance, remember when Jesus would say blessed. That that's you know if you do these things you're you're blessed. This there's a blessing on this, but in in the prophetic Hebraic understanding of prophetic words, of judgment, always began with a woe. Mm-hmm. Now, when you get into the book of Revelation, there's only one time in, in the history of all humanity it's brought to the superlative three times. And it's when God is pouring out his wrath on the earth, and it's not even people saying it. You have angels manifesting in the natural, saying, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth of those that have taken the mark that have done these things. God says, woe to those that decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed to rob the needy of justice and to take what is right from the poor of my people, that the widow may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. What will you do in the day of punishment and the desolation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave my glory? Without me, they shall bow down among the prisoners and they shall fall among the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Guys, we're on the verge of God, I think, pouring out judgment on a lot of things. Now, what Mary and I have talked about is spot judgment. You know, people just want all of America destroyed. And and some of the things that that I'm reading, well, that's what the communists want. Don't come in line with what the communists want. We need God to spot judge and to take this wickedness out and to reveal what's really going on. Mary, I, be- I believe in with all my heart that if the average Democrat really knew what the Democrats in Washington were all about and what they were doing, they would raise up in horror and say, no, I really believe that. Well, I think that God's sure given them a chance to see it. I think that's what these last couple of years have been, is, is you want to see who you voted for, you want to see what's really going on, and it's, it's just right there in your face. It is. The Hunter Biden thing, the, the Russia uh, hoax. I mean, the whole, yeah. everything has been, it's been proven. And, and it doesn't matter what they prove. It matters what the media says. They're, that what they're doing is they're in your face saying, shut up and believe this. Just shut up and believe this. Yeah. It, the, it doesn't work unless we shut up and believe them. And the, the approval rating of the, the main news media is at what, about 14%? Which means that uh, over eighty six percent of us saying you guys are full of bull. Okay, so let the eighty six stand up against it. Yeah. Well, guys, 
God is going to do something. I mean, this, this was basically, they have been declaring war on God, just like mm-hmm. what we see in Psalms 2. They're declaring war on God in America. They're declaring war on righteousness. They're declaring war on anything that resembles godliness in this nation. Well, and if we if we continue to pray, Father, open the eyes yes. of all your creation. You know, there are a lot of people out there that, that may not be saved, but they're not wicked people. They're just trying to make a living, you know, trying to live in the America that they grew up in. Yeah. And yeah. so I, my prayer is, Father, open their eyes. And, and I mean, it would be easy for your eyes to be open. Yeah. Even if you just listen to regular news now, you would have to start questioning things. Anybody that understood the old days of when we were uh, worried about the Soviets mm-hmm. coming and everything else, watch that video. It was like, holy cow, Batman. I mean, it's just like. And, and just, just common sense things yeah. like too many plants you know, being destroyed that have to do with food. Yeah. Too many farms being bought up by other nations. Billionaires. And so so we're going to have to to look at this and see what's going on. You have to ask that question, and then you need to seek an answer. Yeah, you do. So, guys, it's time to pray. Guys, we need to come to this conference prayed up and fasted mm-hmm. up, believing that God's going to move. Yeah. I think that not only is it a time of healing, but it's time for us to join as a body and begin making prophetic declarations yeah i believe it that's what i think we'll be doing and so uh we're we're excited about it um god's going to move god's going to do some great things and we just we got to believe this is a time to gird ourselves and Mm -hmm. to strengthen ourselves with truth so that we can stand and be ready for whatever god wants us to do and father I, i pray that over over every remnant member father we bind up the spirit of fear but father your word says we have not been given the spirit of fear but of power we say that again of power, love, and a sound mind, and That's it right. takes all three. And Father, we're going to see you move and do great things in the days ahead. And we just thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.